Um, and uh, and yeah, I just uh, wanted to get uh, get started and get right into it. Um, uh, basically, um, yeah, we have a few open slots for tonight if anyone wants to send over any more games. Um, but uh, but those are filling up quickly too. Um, and of course, anything anyone sends in that we don't get to immediately, um, we're definitely gonna um, we're definitely gonna look at you know sometime in the near future. So feel feel free to send your games and uh, yeah, look forward to uh, to reviewing them on the stream. Um, this uh, this game was sent to us um, by uh, the uh, the white side on this game. So uh, really, why Bob? And uh, I um, yeah, it's interesting. It starts off with G three uh, Hungarian opening. I didn't know that's actually what that's called, but uh, but it's an interesting flank opening for white. Um, uh, in terms of popularity, I think it's number. Uh, it may not even be on this list, really. Uh, this uh, this one G three. Um, but uh, but against it, um, D5 or E5 are both playable. D5 is the most popular um, uh, uh, response, probably because Bishop to G2 and B5 basically um, runs into a, a blocking of this Fion Shadow diagonal. Um, hey, good morning, Aphelion. How are you? Um, yes. Yeah, so, so so basically. Um, I, you know, I was sort of thinking of like an intuitive reason for why um, uh, D5 blocks, uh, or why D5 is the most popular response. Um, I'm good, yeah. Basically, uh, just getting into uh, into the morning stream. Um, I uh, basically st starting my day off with the stream, and then uh, gonna do homework for my class, um, and then uh, yeah, and then uh, another stream tonight. So awesome, uh, perfect Sunday. Uh, I um. Uh, so yeah, so I was thinking about why D5 is the most popular response to um, to G3, uh, and I think it's just because it blocks off this Fianchetto diagonal here. Uh, so here, D4, Knight C6, Bishop G2, and uh, and basically the the middle of the board is basically blocked off for White. Um, you know, this is sort of an interesting way to play it. This deviates a little bit from the standard um, uh, you know the standard Queen's pawn game idea of like C6, Knight D7. Um, and rough development for the light squared bishop. Um, here with c4, it's a little bit tricky to come up with the response uh, for black. Um, so I would be tempted to play c4 here, um, but uh, but let's see what happens. Um, bishop f5 uh, gets this dark squared um, bishop developed. Uh, I think that's a good plan. Um, and uh, and c4 again looks like a pretty tempting move. Um, it, it is in the opening book, um, but uh, but white res and black responds with e6. Um, the uh, the I guess the most popular move here is knight f3, and uh, and basically this is a um, a game in which uh, the center is um, uh, you know basically the center is um, I guess mostly um, favorable to black. Um, good quick development for black though. Um, so yeah, so on knight f6, bishop g2, um, and uh, and basically um, you know this comes with this is a, a game that got sent in, but it's a pretty early um, uh, material win for White. Um, let's just run through it really quick. Um, uh, yeah, so um, so basically you know I think I think uh, that um, that knight sacrifice on uh, on d4 was premature, um, but uh, but White gets a good tactical win out of this. So um, you know ultimately like. It, it was good execution to maintain the peace advantage. Um, so obviously, I guess I don't know if I have too much in terms of uh, you know to add to white. Um, black played a clearly unsound opening, um, and then white uh, white kind of had a steady, uh, consistent response to it. Um, he followed the uh, the fundamental principles of developing all the pieces. He worked for control of the center, um, and with this material lead that uh, that black basically just volunteers. Um, uh, white ends up getting a pretty solid, um, a solid edge. Uh, not too much in terms of, uh, uh, you know, not ter too much in terms of improvement, really. I mean, basically just consistent fundamental play um, is the response to a large material loss in the opening. Um, but anyways, uh, let's take a look at, uh, at G3 as a general opening, because um, this is what white played here. Uh, white plays a consistent line, bishop G2, and then, uh, and then knight takes d4 obviously takes us out of the opening book. Um, but let's learn this. It's called the King's Fion Shadow Opening. Uh, the response is 1d5 and uh, d4, knight c6, bishop g2 um, is, is, one, is one potential line. Um, but let's look at like a, a more popular uh, line here. Uh, you know, knight f3, knight f6, bishop g2, c6, castles, bishop g4. 
and uh, and basically, um, I think uh, I think this is uh, you know this this transposes into an interesting queen's pawn game. Um, thematically, what uh, you know what to look at look for here. Uh, I guess you know White's probably going to play d4 or c4. Um, probably with c6 having already been played, I think d4 is a better way to challenge the center. Um, just because uh, you don't want to get into those like complicated queen's gambit accepted type um, type issues with like uh, c4 pawn takes c4 and then the queen doesn't have the standard discovery there. Um, but anyways, uh, it's pretty interesting um, kind of the way that this played out. D3, Bn d7, Bn d2, e5, e4, pawn takes, pawn takes, bishop c5. And it's basically, um, you know, it has characteristics of a few different openings, but, um, you know, the, the G3 move order is not the defining characteristic of this opening. Um, the defining characteristics of this opening is um, relatively open game with quick development. Looks a little bit like, um, I guess, you know, it has some characteristics of, like, uh, Karo Khan with a trade on E4, maybe. Um, I don't know. This is interesting uh, with its D pawn exchanged. Um, there's also an opening uh, where it's um, uh, cool. Yeah, no, no, for sure. Um, interesting. Yeah, that one G three. Uh, that one G three move is uh, is pretty interesting. Um, uh, you know, I, I do. Yeah, let's let's go over it. Um, what type of moves do you normally? Because uh, I think this game, you know, your opponent hung a piece pretty early, so this was this was definitely helpful to you as white. Um, but uh, but here. Um, what uh, what type of move did uh, you know? What are your main developing moves in this opening? So maybe we can kind of examine what your um, your opening book is. Uh, so like here, um, knight c6, bishop g2. We're already sort of out of the main line um, g3 uh, response. Um, but yeah, so if you if there's any particular opening line that you'd like to go through here, uh, we can definitely do it. If you like write out like a standard uh, like a standard transposition, um, we have a few free minutes to take a look um so yeah so d4 so people push e5 or d5 um yeah that makes sense um you know basically you've played a flank opening um that's uh or e5 knight f6 yep those i mean those both look good um i was trying to figure out so so in terms of um popularity of responses here um knight f6 is pretty popular because it's non-committal but the most popular is d5 so d5 here, and basically, um, you know, the e4 squares, it, it makes a play for control of the e4 square. And then in addition to that, if you if black plays c6, um, it can be a tough attacking situation for white. Um, uh, space for, an, uh, like, in terms of, I mean, we can just uh, do some analysis in the chat, but, um, uh, like, in terms of, like, a, a Discord, I have a Discord server if anyone's interested in, like, going over games at a slower point. Um, uh, not until tonight. Um, if you want to add one for tonight, uh, that is good. Uh, otherwise, everything here is, uh, is for, um, for, we have uh, six slots filled for this morning. Um, but if you add a game for tonight, I'll get it in at the 6.05 stream. Um, uh, but yeah, um, no, thank you very much for, for uh, being interested in sending a game, Justin. Like, please, please send one over. Um, you know, I'm also not offended if you can't watch the stream live. Everything's recorded. So, um, so even if you can't make it to the 605 stream, um, I'll still go through the game and it'll be recorded and you can watch it tomorrow. Uh, but yeah, definitely send your game. Yeah, no, no, no. Thanks. Thanks. Uh, thanks, Justin. No, I, I, you know, I'm a little, um, my main point is that I'd, I'd like, um, uh, I'd like to get more than 14 days of, uh, of lessons up there. Um, at this point, uh, Twitch, I think cancels them after 14 days, but I, I wish, I wish we could have them last, uh, last up there forever. Um, but yeah, anyways, um, yeah, just send the game and we'll, I'll put it, uh, directly on the analysis list, Justin. Um, thanks, uh, thanks, thank you for that. Um, but yeah, so, um, so in terms of this game, uh, G3, D5, um, uh, yeah, um, can you post, if you post it on the Discord, uh, I'll take a look at the PGN. Um, so here, uh, D4, um, uh, so D5, D4, Knight C6, Bishop G2. And, uh, and basically, you know, this is a game where, you know, both sides do best, um, uh, uh, you know, having straightforward development here. Um, g3, d4, knight c6. Um, you know, this deviates from, from, a normal, um, uh, from the normal uh, queen's pawn game, though, because c5 as opposed to c6, uh, as opposed to knight c6. Um, 
But yeah, so basically you're playing a flank opening, your opponent's playing a um uh you know, a um a center pawn opening, um and you uh decide to challenge in the center with d4. Um I think this is all pretty reasonable. Um I think this is a reasonable idea here. Um oh yeah, sure, here, I'll send the Discord invite now. Um uh, the Discord invite is right here. Um, yep, here you go. Um, yeah, thanks uh, Thanks for that, Justin. Um, it's a good Discord. Uh, if anyone else is here and wants to join it, um, it's, uh, you know, there's a place for submitting games. There's a place for general chat. Um, uh, I, um, I uh, am still working on my Discord skills, but... Uh, but uh, it's a it's a good Discord that uh, that I think is a good uh, a good way to reach me. Um, anyways, uh, Knight F6, Knight F3, E6, and uh, and White's sort of developing um, you know normally uh, with the priority on this bishop on G2. Um, C4 uh, is a way to challenge the center um, as White. Uh, this has some similarities to like the standard Queen's pawn Queen's Gambit game. Um, uh, except with bishop g2 as an earlier, uh, you know, it, moves were spent earlier on bishop to g2. Um, hey, welcome Topo, thank you very much for joining the stream. Uh, yeah, we're just, uh, we're just looking over games, uh, for, for this morning. Um, and we're looking over, uh, 1g3 as a playable opening. Um, I think, yeah, this bishop's fianchetto opening, um, I think, uh, you know, basically development in the center. Um, I think, uh, maybe there's a good challenge, uh, for c4 here. Um, maybe bishop to f4. Um, we can spend a little bit more time on the game too, maybe. But um, I think the the most instructive uh, part of this game is is uh, is the ability to bring up this uh, this one g3 opening. Um, knight c6, bishop g2, knight takes d4. Um, let's look at the other alternatives here because we're still in opening book. Um, if uh, if black plays um, bishop f5 here, uh, the recommended response is knight f3. Um, knight b4 is an attack that can be generated for black. Um, knight a a3 is the response. Um, in this particular case, uh, you know, basically, uh, knight a3 is a reasonable move. It's basically the only defensive move. Um, this, uh, this type of, um, knight, uh, you know, knight to the rim, uh, uh, move is, is generally not ideal. Um, but if it has a good, uh, reason for it, specifically to defend the c2 square, um, it makes sense. Uh, so, you know, for example, if um, black plays knight f6 here, potentially you could play c3, knight c6, and then c4. Um, you know, knight b1, I guess, is the more popular transposition, but um, if you wanted to, you could uh, open up with a um, with an immediate center push. Uh, but yeah, um, uh, c4, knight f3, um, knight f6. And I think white's got to have a bit of an advantage here. Um, this uh, this knight on c6 is going to become more and more of a liability as um, as this game goes forward. Uh, you know, this c4 basically makes this limits black's options in terms of ability to defend d5. Um, here, the knight goes to c3, the bishop goes to f4, and uh, and white has very healthy development. Um, there's no there's no problems here really for for white. Uh, I think knight f3. I, I would be surprised if knight c3 wasn't a very, uh, you know, a very reasonable response. A any developing moves here uh, sort of transpose pretty similarly. Knight c3 on the next move is preferred, I guess. Um, yeah, let's take a look. Uh, g3 e5. Um, g3 e5. Bishop g2 d5. Um, d4 e4 c4 c6. Yeah, uh, that makes sense. Um, let's take a look at this opening. Uh, this, um, you know, basically King's Fianchetto. They call it the Regan variation. I didn't know what that was called, um, but uh, but Knight to C3, um, I think, is the uh, is the move. Um, hey, welcome, Tarash. Uh, cool. Yeah, thank you very much, Justin. I appreciate it. Um, yeah, some slots for tonight if you want to send one. Um, it looks like uh, it looks like there's still some slots uh, for tonight. Um, I. Uh, it's interesting. I it, these things go from like having too few games to too many games uh, really quick. But um, if you guys send some slots for tonight, uh, we will look at those uh, for sure. Um, I'm just checking my. Uh, I'm just checking. I have a, a live Reddit post also asking for games right now. Um, so uh, so I just want to make sure I don't take in too many. But um, I think we're still good. Uh, one second. Um, yeah. So uh, so basically, um, I guess you know. 
that uh, that line. Hey, thank you very much, uh, Tarash fan, for uh, for um, joining the stream uh, or for following. Uh, no worries. Yeah, no worries, Tarash. Uh, not a problem. Um, uh, yeah, but yeah, um, I'll get that game in for tonight, uh, Tarash. Thank you very much for uh, for sending it, and thank you, Justin, as well. Um, uh, let's see. Um, just pulling. I just want to put that into uh, into my spreadsheet right now. Um, but uh, but yeah. Um, cool. Uh, so uh, this yeah this opening here um is kind of a tricky transposition for white. Um, you know this this is solid. Uh, solid response. Um, it uh puts a lot of pressure on um you know the white center. And, uh, and it ultimately adds up to um, a complicated, you know, basically a complicated response for uh, for White here, um, who's now lost uh, his mobility of his um, G2 bishop, and uh, and Black who has kind of a it looks almost like a reverse French uh, pawn um, pawn structure, like uh, this is you know the this is basically a French with uh, with C3 having been played uh, for White. Um, so here, uh, they're looking at knight h3 is the most popular move. That's weird. Uh, that's a weird uh, eval. Um, I would uh, I would go with the more intuitive knight to c3, knight to f6, c takes, c takes, and uh, bishop to g5 here. Um, this is uh, this is the line the main line. Um, uh, this is no this is the main line uh, for uh, for um, uh, white here. Uh, 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 Bob, uh, this is, um, yeah, this, this basically, you know, I, I think, I think this is challenging. Um, you've, uh, white is a, um, uh, you know, white does have center control and some advantages in the center, uh, but, uh, or black does have advantages in the center, but I think with straightforward, uh, development, um, is white's best response. Uh, knight c3, knight f6, um, Either C takes D5 is the most popular move, but I actually prefer Bishop to G5 here. Um, I think basically this uh, this opening here is um, you know this this allows White to develop quickly. Um, one of the um, uh, more you know basically one of the more popular um, uh, you know one of the the more basically the fundamental concept in um, you know a flank opening. Is giving your opponent center control and generally less cramped development, um, and then you uh, trying to undermine with moves like f3 potentially, or uh, or a few other options. Um, uh, you know, c4 uh, is a move that undermines black center to a degree. Um, uh, but here you're basically um, coming up with the choice of uh, you know basically you're coming up with the choice to um, uh, give your opponent center control. Um, in that context, I think you should aim for the best development. Um, yeah, I mean, F3, you know, it, it has to be done carefully because you want to make sure that, um, uh, you know, the pawn doesn't, pawn structure doesn't end up too fractured and the, um, uh, you know, and the, the development remains good for white. Um, but especially given that the bishop is already um, running into this uh, well-supported E4 pawn, um, you know, there's some problems for white here that uh, that make um, that make things more difficult. Uh, so yeah, so f3, a well-timed f3, I think, is a good undermining move against this uh, this central pawn structure. Um, knight c3, knight f6, pawn takes, pawn takes, bishop g5, and uh, and here, you know, um, yeah, f3 becomes a playable move. Um, I, but uh, but it does need to be you know relatively well timed so that Black doesn't uh, doesn't launch an aggressive kingside attack. Um, knight d7, queen b3, h6, bishop f4, and uh, and White's development is just generally healthy. Um, f3 you know either before or after e3, um, but uh, but then knight to e2. Um, yeah, it's interesting. I, I think that's, uh, but I, I think, uh, you know, especially with this game, particular game, um, I think the opening is the primary focus. And I think, um, you know, uh, G3 is kind of an interesting move as a flank opening. Um, it doesn't uh, offer as cramped a position for white as potentially happens in, uh, in some situations. Uh, you know, f flank openings, especially like the modern for black, um, lead to a spatial disadvantage. Here, you know, white has um, basically... Uh, you know, given control of the center, but he does have some space on the queen side that serves as a compensating characteristic. Uh, maybe knight b5, uh, queen to c7. 
or, or with a, with a threat on c7 here um, could potentially be a good idea for uh, for white. Um, yeah, like I sort of like uh, knight to b5. Uh, like so, so they're proposing like you know knight to b6. I would think uh, knight to b5 could like potentially uh, offer some value as a as a play. But here, you know, the space advantage for black is uh, is obvious in the center, but not obvious overall on the board. Um, anyways, very interesting uh, outcome here. Um, basically, yeah, I think f3 as an undermining move is probably pretty solid. Um, but the focus here should just be on healthy development for white. Um, I think uh, I think that's probably the best straight uh, the best you know straightforward response to uh, to um, black's big center in the line that you mentioned. So like this one right here. You know, this is uh, this is sort of an inverted French structure, um, but uh, but it offers some advantages as white um, as the extra tempo and the ability to kind of expand the position, um, particularly on the queen side. Uh, but yeah, overall, very interesting, uh, Bob. Uh, thank you very much for sending the game, and uh, I think um, yeah, no, 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 I'm 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 really enjoying this. Uh, I think it's um, you know it's great to be doing this. Uh, but yeah, um, so I guess I would say um, pawn takes d5 and queen b3 uh, is probably, um, you know, that's that's an opening move and uh, a way to uh, to kind of advance this. Um, but anyways, uh, yeah, um, queen takes d4 and, uh, you know, with, with this is a pretty straightforward win that white was just able to convert a hung piece. Um, but in any case, uh, thank you very much for sending the game. Um, it gave us a good opportunity to look at 1g3. Um, please keep sending them. Uh, more games out of 1g3 would be kind of interesting. I I'd like to see kind of how that um, that opening structure uh, sort of evolves and wa ways that basically um, you know you can come up with good attacks along um, uh, you know along this basically flank opening against um, center pawn uh, center pawn play. Um, I guess it will lead to some interesting transpositions. Uh, in this particular case, the line that you mentioned, the French. But uh, but please keep sending games and uh, and. Uh, I'm very excited to see them. Super interesting stuff. Um, all right, cool. Uh, so here um, uh, we have a game from um, uh, Croc, uh, who was playing White. Um, I guess his username is different here, but um, but here, yeah. So uh, so White played. Uh, uh, this game's taken from White's position. Um, I haven't seen it before. Uh, Bishop e7 is a relatively conservative play for Black. Um, relatively unchallenging for white and uh, and overall um, yeah I think things look pretty good um, I think uh, I think basically you know white gets a good position and uh, I don't know exactly how black equalizes but but overall uh, it's pretty interesting um, yeah thank you very much Bob thank you very much for uh, for sharing the game and uh, yeah please keep please send another um, I'm actually super curious to see the win over a, a master there um, yeah, it sounds, sounds like an awesome game. Um, so yeah, please send it and, uh, we can probably get to it tomorrow. Um, yeah, so here, uh, knight c3, um, Hungarian defense, uh, I guess, Italian game, Hungarian defense, bishop e7. Um, bishop e7 is pretty unchallenging for, uh, for white. Um, you know, bishop, um, yeah, perfect. Thanks, Bob. Uh, yeah, please send it. Um, so, uh, so yeah, so bishop c5 and then threats on f2, I think are pretty, um, uh, you know, are basically pretty uh, good for black. So with bishop e7, um, there's not nearly as much challenge for center squares. Um, here, uh, you know, white looks like he's winning. Um, you know, basically knight h7, uh, you know, uh, offers white uh, this long diagonal, potential attacks on h6, potential d4, ability to expand in the center. And, uh, and overall, uh, I think white's in pretty good shape. Um, rook e1, bishop g4, uh, and this is actually, this is an interesting way to play it. Um, this allows a pretty, uh, you know, this, this will allow a, a quick, uh, a quick attack by white along the g-file. Um, but, uh, you know, like many types of moves where you're opening up the rook, where you're opening up, like, uh, the king side, um, to attack your opponent's king side after castling, um, it's pretty double-edged. Uh, you know, white will have to, so knight, uh, the knight plays to g5, um, and actually, uh, bishop takes, bishop takes, um, and then the queen moves to e2, but, uh, but this could potentially get dangerous, uh, for white, actually, along this king side. Um, so, uh, let's just go back here, because this, this transposed very quickly into an attack for black. Um, 
here we're in in a interesting opening position. Um, uh, and uh, and bishop e3 is a, obviously a playable move. It's a straightforward developing move. Um, but this, uh, yeah, this. Um, hey, thank you very much uh, for for uh, the uh, observe Lao. Um, uh, yeah, um, rook g1, queen takes, and uh, and queen takes h6 here. Um, so by this point, uh, black's you know basically black has made a few tactical errors. Um, I think maybe uh, rook takes g7, queen takes g7. Rook to g1 here. Uh, that might be the best. Uh, that might be the best alternative. Um, I guess. Uh, yeah, queen takes g1, and uh, you know now now white's attack is a little bit diminished, and probably the best way to follow it up is like knight d5, knight d7. Um, but uh, but king g1 here um, is uh, is I think the best. Um, yeah, uh, king g1, and then. Um, you know, basically, I, I think white does have the advantage here. Uh, let's just look at how the actual game um, turned out. Uh, this is a pretty, very interesting, pretty volatile game. Um, uh, rook g6 is not tactically ideal. Uh, I think the best tactic was uh, was rook takes g7, queen takes g7, rook g1. Um, but it's very interesting. Um, you know, there's an old like uh, classic game that, where there was some like masterpiece move with uh, with some very condensed um, takeable pinned pieces on uh, on the um, you know defending side's queen side or, or king side here. Uh, so overall, um, I think uh, I think this is pretty you know this is pretty solid. Uh, rook g6, queen f3. Um, you know, th this ended up transposing into a uh, uh, win for uh, White with, um, you know, somewhat uh, suboptimal play by Black. Um, but it is wild when you can get the Queen on H6 and the Rook on G6 and the Bishop on C4 and everything's pinned. Uh, it's kind of cool looking, um, for sure. Uh, so yeah, so Knight E6, um, Bishop takes E6, and uh, and White's up pretty significantly. Yeah, that's a uh, yeah, that's Frank Marshall. Interesting. Yeah, that sounds correct. Um, I I knew the story and sort of remembered the position, but uh, but it's been a long time since I've looked over that stuff. Um, yeah, there's an awesome game by Frank Marshall. Uh, I would check. Um, yeah, the gold coin game. Um, if any of you guys is interested in seeing a crazy position that looks sort of like this, um, there's a gold coin. Uh, yeah, gold coin game by Frank Marshall. I'm sure is something that you could Google and uh, and look at it. Um, but uh, but anyways, um, this uh, this position ends up um, looking pretty good for uh, for um, Black after the attack gets diminished. Uh, let's look. Um, uh, yeah, no, Frank Marshall's the classic player. Um, you know, in one characteristic, uh, you know, he knows he plays some unsound sacrifices, um, but his wins are just awesome in the way that they're created. Uh, thank you very much uh, for um, the observe, uh, Jorilano. Um, thank you very much uh, for for joining the stream. Um, but yeah, the gold coin game, I would check that one out. Uh, very interesting. Um, but, uh, but I guess, um, you know, especially after the queen trades here, um, white's advantage, uh, gets less pronounced. Um, rook f8, rook takes, um, and, uh, but yeah, let's see exactly where, um, the eval flips. Uh, here, rook f8, and then, um, rook f1, uh, Seems slow, but um, but we can take a look at it. Uh, knight f1, knight g5, knight d5, and I guess uh, I guess there are going to be some threats potentially with uh, with knight to f6, maybe, um, or so, yeah, knight to f3, knight to f6. Um, but this is a uh, yeah, this is pretty interesting. Um, you know, white basically has lost his winning attack and actually. His uh, his two and a half pawn advantage is primarily based on his actual two pawn advantage, um, two and a half and uh, and he has he's up two pawns, um, so I, so I think that um, White didn't uh, optimize tactically here. Um, the first uh, the first change that I think I would make um, is uh, is this Rook takes G seven Queen takes G seven Rook G one, um, you know Rook G three is very Rook G six is like very much a masterpiece type move, but um, but objectively. Uh, this is better, um, you know. Trading the two rooks uh, and opening the uh, the king side is uh, is definitely worth uh, the queen. Um, yeah, yeah, no, no, that's cool. Um, Marshall Chess Club, uh, you know, I think they're trying to reopen it. Um, I don't know. It's an interesting place, uh, very historical. Uh, 
But uh, but yeah, um, this uh, this is interesting, an interesting way that this uh, that this plays out. Um, so yeah, I guess I guess the, in terms of um, the first thing I, I think in terms of opening examination, um, you know, White is playing this opening in a very double-edged way. Uh, bishop um, to g5, rook to g1, and uh, and then there's definitely some danger for uh, for um, uh, Black here. Uh, but uh, or there's danger for Black, and there's also danger for White. Um, but on rook g6, uh, that basically maximizes the pins. Um, anyways, uh, this um, you know this way of opening up the um, the king side is good, uh, and uh, you know this this but this uh, this was overly ambitious. Um, White is showing a seven point advantage here. Um, the key move here actually uh, is one that's pretty interesting, which is bishop to b3, um, which maintains the pin. Uh, but doesn't um, uh, but and but doesn't simplify the position. Um, so like a5 I guess is seen as the best move here. Um, but queen takes g6 is unplayable and uh, and knight to g4 is unplayable as well. Uh, rook takes h6 is probably the best. Rook takes f6 is probably the best option. Um, knight d4 maybe. Uh, but overall uh, it's pretty interesting. Um, yeah. Hey, thank you very much uh, for the follow, uh, Amirko. Um, but yeah, uh, all of this I think is pretty good. Um, you know, to this point, White has played a good game. Um, this is mainly about tactical execution. Um, Rook G6 was probably over -ambi overly ambitious, but um, it uh, it allowed for some good opportunities uh, for White after uh, after Black makes some misplays. Um, super interesting, pretty position. It's cool. Uh, it's cool when you have this uh, this formation here for sure. Um, but I guess I would say, um, uh, keep, um, yeah, no, no, I mean, you know, keep this, uh, position together, basically, you know, basically, um, don't, don't, uh, don't simplify, um, an, an attacking position with, uh, with less than winning material if you don't need to. Um, you know, in terms of tactical play, um, bishop b3 was an improvement, uh, rook takes g7 early here was an improvement, um, uh, but uh, but very uh, and then uh, and then avoiding this uh, this simplification uh, with bishop to b3. Um, but but as from a conceptual perspective, trading off pieces um, while you're doing an attack uh, tends to be unfavorable to the attacker who's trading off pieces and good for the defender who's uh, who's trading off pieces. Um, that's kind of a fundamental takeaway from this. Um, this is a pretty good demonstration of that general principle. So if you're attacking, leave things complicated. If you're um, defending, try to make things more simple by trading off pieces. Uh, you know, conditional on the idea that there aren't some overriding characteristic that, uh, that makes that uh, uh, tactically um, unsound. Uh, but that's the general way to handle an attack as defense is to trade off and, uh, and um, you know, uh, continue your attack as white. Um, the, the defender wants to trade things off, uh, the pieces that he's getting attacked by. Um, and this, uh, this game basically demonstrates why, um, these trades, uh, these trades were pretty unfavorable to, um, to, uh, white in general. Um, yeah, no, 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 I think, I think, no, not at all crushed. Um, this one here, I think, uh, or, well, no, sorry, you're talking about the other game. Uh, but yeah, no, I think this game was pretty solid. Um, you know, white basically had a big lead and then ultimately, um, you know, had simplified in a position where he shouldn't have simplified. No, not at all, Ophelia, not a problem. Um, uh, but yeah, so, um, so this, I guess, is pretty, um, I don't know, you know, this traded off in, into a kind of unusual way. Um, but the main uh, instructive point here is that uh, that um, White would have done the best here, having left the pieces on the board, uh, and the pieces unfortunately uh, got you know traded off. Um, but here, uh, White has simplified uh, really significantly, um, and uh, and the plus is much less uh, large than it was. Um, Bishop takes f7, I guess, offers some possibilities for White. Um, very uh, kind of open kingside for Black, but. But the main issue I think here was a fundamental one. Um, simplifying here uh, traded off and lost about three or four points uh, in the eval. Um, so, uh, so the fundamental idea is uh, keep your pieces on the board. Um, otherwise, very pretty. Uh, look at all this. Uh, look at all these pinned uh, pieces. Um, especially, look at this uh, this sort of like uh, square type formation. Um, that's pretty wild. Uh, but um, but yeah, uh, White should have kept the pieces on the board uh, to maximize his uh, his attacking potential. Um, it's a very interesting game. Thank you very much for sending it, Troger. Appreciate it. Um, yeah, or uh, Crocky. Thank you. Thank you for sending that game. Uh, very cool. 
Um, okay, so uh, so this is another game to us um, sent from the uh, the white side's perspective. Um, oh, looks like there's some uh, there's some corruption on this game. Uh, interesting. Um, huh. Okay. Um, all right. Well, it looks like that game uh, that game was not uh, uh, that game is not sent. Um, this uh, this D1 game. So we'll skip back to it and, uh, and circle back later. Um, we might have some extra time. Um, but this uh, this game was sent to us by the real. Uh, and uh, and let's look. Um, cool. Uh, uh, C5, Knight C6. Uh, this is a pretty interesting open Sicilian. Um, uh, d6, bishop e3, knight, knight f6. Um, we're really in the mainline Sicilian here. Uh, this is the real scheme uh, uh, to be to confirm. Uh, so yeah, um, bishop b5 is one of the options here. Um, the main move here is, which is kind of surprising, um, is uh, is this um, bishop c4 in the Schwenigen Sicilian. Um, you know, bishop c4 is a complicated move to be played in the Sicilian. Um, it runs into this uh, this um, you know pawn on e6. And the diagonal is not really large or, or ability to to change much in um, uh, you know for the bishop on c4. Uh, you know I guess the bishop c4 here is meant to support against d5. Um, basically on d5, uh, you know that that bishop's uh, diagonal is not nearly as as blocked off as it is with multiple pawns on the um, the a2 uh, g8 diagonal. Um, but in any case. Um, uh, bishop c4 uh, looks pretty solid. Bishop e7, queen to e2, a6, castles queenside, and uh, we're still very much in. Uh, so, so the, basically, this is a um, a main uh, Schwenigen Sicilian opening line. Um, white has healthy development, um, but black is likely to uh, to get into this um, you know this issue uh, on the queen side. You know, basically queenside king safety issues potentially. Um, the natural play for uh, black in the Sicilian is to the queen side. Um, so if the king is castled queenside, this offers direct attacking chances on uh, on the black king. Um, so like b5, rook b8. Um, we had an interesting game yesterday where we were looking at the um, analysis value of uh, of rook b8 versus rook c8. Um, rook b8 attacks uh, this b2 pawn more directly than rook c8 attacks the king. Um, there's more pieces on the c file. Uh, this rook b8 move, um, you know, has the potential to to be problematic for uh, for this pawn on b2. Uh, anyways, um, after castling queenside, it's pretty close to equality and a very mainline Sicilian line. Um, uh, here, instead, um, black plays a less, um, you know, a less of a book move. Um, if you look at the book move, this is only a five-game move um, versus uh, versus many more for bishop to c4 or bishop to e2. Um, uh, bishop b5 is sort of an unusual diagonal for the black bishop. Um, I guess I would say that this uh, that this diagonal is more of a problem for the black bishop, or, or for the light squared uh, the light squared bishop because he doesn't want to trade for the black knight on c6. Um, a trade uh, for the knight on c6, um, you know, basically improves black's position. Um, it forces uh, white to give up his bishop pair, right? So if he plays like bishop takes c6, um, black will retake with c6 and then have a direct open file for his uh, for his rook on b8, um, almost a fully open file. Uh, and just in general, trading off the um, the bishop pair in the Sicilian like this is not thematically that great. Um, you know, bishop takes c6 is not you know trading in c6 broadly is probably not the best idea for uh, for um, white in the Sicilian. Uh, you know, usually trades on c6 are helpful. They sort of um, help black construct a, a strong um, pawn structure in the center, uh, like with with all this, with all these pawns, and with a d5 push coming. Um, rook b8 uh, becomes valuable against the bishop on b5. Um, you know, basically, you know, uh, the one of the advantages um, for uh, for black in the Sicilian is having the rook on the c file. Um, but uh, but one of but you know even better than the c file actually um, is the b file for the rook. Um, it offers a direct attacking line uh, from um, the rook on b8 to the pawn on b2. Uh, but um, but you know if you're looking at a semi-open uh, file, um, the one uh, from the one on the b file is actually longer for black in most of the Sicilian games. Um, so this simplification uh, I don't think is favorable to um, to white. 
Um, by the time this happens, and this is what happens in the game, um, the uh, the eval shifts towards equality or slightly better for black. Um, this uh, this rook on the B file um, is an advantage, uh, like an asymmetrical advantage that um, uh, you know will really benefit black. Um, so yeah, so in terms of instructional ideas, um, here you've played a mainline Sicilian, great, um, but uh, but um, you play Bishop B5 uh, with the idea of um, trading off on C6, and uh, I guess I would argue that the trade on C6 in general, um, you know, needs some type of uh, very material compensation to be worthwhile for white. Um, overall, uh, it improves Black's pawn structure. Um, it has uh, this. Yeah, I did. I played the Indiana State Chess uh, Championship. Um, thank you for asking, uh, Jor. Uh, I didn't win. Uh, it was a good. It was a good tournament, but uh, but I had a good time, and that was all good. Um, bishop to b5 uh, is a. Um, but yeah, bishop to b5 is not the correct diagonal for the bishop here. Um, this is one of the surprising positions where bishop c4 is is a more playable move. Um, bishop e2 is also good. Um, but either way, uh, yeah, um, these uh, these bishop moves. Uh, it is correct to develop the bishop here. Um, but I don't think as a general policy it's correct to be trading on c6. Um, those c6 trades as in general, um, uh, uh, yeah, it was interesting, uh, Jor. Um, you know, he played a good game, he's a good player, uh, and uh, I, uh, I had some interesting, you know, it was an interesting opening. Um, he played a very early queen, uh, you know, a queen move. Um, but um, uh, yeah, he, he played well, and uh, I, I didn't win the tournament. Um, I was a little frustrated. I mean, I, not frustrated, but I was. Uh, it was kind of a bummer because even if I'd won that last round game, I wouldn't have won the tournament. Uh, that guy, the other guy, finished with four and a half. So um, overall, uh, but overall, very good tournament. I had a good time. Um, interesting, uh, interesting trip. Um, but yeah, so so trading on c6 uh, here, I think, is nothing too uh, too great. Um, uh, after uh, after these this simplification, um, you know, blacks showing equality or better, uh, you know, largely because this uh, this open queen side favors black, as is common in uh, in the Sicilian. Um, uh, so yeah, so taking this back a second, um, uh, I would be more reluctant to trade on c6. Um, there aren't that many opening lines. Um, uh, I don't think um, there's anything you know too great there. But, um, uh, no, I mean, I don't, I don't remember, but, uh, but yeah, it was a fun tournament. It was a good tournament to play. Um, yeah, uh, but yeah, so, um, this, uh, this basically, um, uh, you know, trades off into relative equality for, uh, for, um, you know, a relatively equal position, uh, but, uh, but with black having more chances, um. It's interesting. Uh, I, I don't know what the best option here is for white, I guess. Uh, probably to um, to continue to try to make um, moves, uh, you know, developing, um, you know, developing in a normal way. Um, but, uh, you know, now now white sort of relinquished the advantage. Um, you know, one of the theoretic the theoretical concepts is uh, is playing, um, you know, white king side advances against, um, uh, you know, black uh, queen side advances. Um, that's one of the main themes in the Sicilian. Uh, but overall, uh, I think this um, this white king side, uh, you know, attack is is pretty strong. Um, you're, you know, it, it, in a general principle in in the Sicilian, and the fact that um, you know white can't do it in this situation, or white is very slow to do it in this situation. Um, is uh, is problematic for black. Um, so here, castles, bishop e7, bishop g5, h6. Um, yeah, overall, I guess I would say, you know, this simplification is not particularly good for white, um, but I, I don't really know what white's options are. Um, bishop takes c6 was overly simplifying here, and, uh, and just as a frame of reference, um, uh, the opening theory here um, strongly weights towards uh, bishop c4, bishop e2. Or even potentially f4, uh, which you know is a different strategy, kind of expanding in the center, um, turning it more into kind of a grand prix type structure. Um, but here, you know, this this uh, this position is equality with uh, with an easier position to play for black. Um, black has a better center. Black has the ability to play on the b file with his rook. Um, overall, kind of uh, yeah, I don't know. Uh, I, in terms of generating, you know, in terms of coming up with a, a plan to generate for white, 
Um, it would take me a while to kind of slow down and uh, uh, you know come up with an idea. Um, maybe the d6 pawn is vulnerable. Maybe um, like b3, you know, is sort of an immediate required response, or rook b1 is sort of an immediate required response. Um, but with queen d3 and like e rook d1, and then attacks on the d6 pawn, maybe that could provide a point of vulnerability. But it's not super easy to come up with a plan for white here. Um, uh, a6, e5 is, is an immediate challenge. Um, I don't think e5 is correct. I think e5 is kind of like, you know, is, is basically, it's too early for it. And also, uh, you know, once these pawns trade off, um, you know, is this really better for white? Uh, you know, white's rook improves, but white's, white has no center anymore. Um, I think if white holds on to this e4 pawn, um, he'll have more chances in order to, uh, in, in order to try to hold the center. Black may simplify with uh, with the d5, but I think e5 is better sa saved for a um, uh, you know for a response to d5 as opposed to playing it immediately. Um, you know, playing it immediately just sort of neutralizes the um, the you know the position in the center, and uh, and then Black's just left with uh, better piece play. Um, so yeah, so I would hold off on e5. Um, you know, the engine suggests Bishop to g3. You know, uh, I guess refocusing on this weak pawn that I was talking about, and potentially adding some pressure on that pawn by uh, by adding this pin on um, rook b8. Uh, I think in terms of other move, like other moves here, um, uh, I don't know. I guess I'm sort of looking at uh, yeah, a3 or b3, maybe b3 and then knight b knight a4. Um, but uh, but plans are difficult to come by for white. I mean, you're almost in the situation where you have to see kind of um, you know Black's plan and Black's tactical execution. It's hard to uh, it's hard to force anything. White's White's basically lost the initiative. Um, Black's the one who's forming the plans here. Anyways, it's very interesting, and uh, I think after um, I think after all this, basically um, you know uh, Black uh, Black unfortunately has has equalized. Um, so yeah, uh, you know, here I guess uh, Black loses some material. Um, uh, how? Yeah, Black just seems this is a t this is a tactical win for White, right? Um, you know, Rook takes a6, free pawn, um, Knight to c3, and uh, and then you know, but, but basically White has uh, has gotten a, pa a connected passed pawn here for basically no compensation. Um, so, you know, this, this, uh, this tactical combination, uh, ended up pl playing out pretty well for white. Um, and then, uh, once, uh, once black's chances are somewhat diminished, um, white's heading into a better queen, uh, better, uh, you know, queenside pawn, um, structure in the end game and, uh, and basically can cement the win based off of the advancement of the B3 pawn. Um, overall, very interesting. Uh, the main points that I would look at are uh, are this. Um, I, I think the tactical play, you know, actually on the queen side here um, with the rook, uh, you know, once this gets extended, is good, um, and and you know, won a game that was that was pretty close to equality. Um, but the uh, the issue here is, um, you know, the issue here is I think this is a um, a line in the Sicilian um, which offers way better chances and way better initiative to black. Um, I would avoid this if possible. Uh, you know, this this is overly. You know, this this open file for uh, for the rook allows many opportunities to to make the game about um, black's. Uh, you know, black's strength on the queen side. Um, but yeah, uh, overall this uh, this looks pretty good. Um, you know, the the game was played pretty well. Uh, just and ended up being a win for white. Um, but uh, the improvement that I would uh, advocate here is uh, is try um, being less interested in uh, in bishop to b5 in the Sicilian, um, unless it's part of uh, you know well established opening theory. Um, bishop to e2, uh, you know, is probably what I would play. Bishop to c4 is the book line, uh, the book Sicilian line. Um, but trades on c6 uh, generally tend to favor black in the Sicilian, um, unless there's a uh, unless there's a really specific reason to do it. Um, there's no reason to give uh, uh, Black the open rook file in the Sicilian, uh, facing towards b2. Um, that trade just tends to to strengthen, uh, you know, strengthen the rook file, uh, make it an open file for uh, for the rook on b8, and uh, also, um, you know, increase the strength of uh, Black center here. Um, so yeah. So anyways, it's very interesting. Um, that was a good way to, uh, you know, that you may, you maximized on uh, on a relatively equal game. With uh, with relatively few chances for white, 
um, but instructively, uh, you know, examine examine trades on C6 in the Sicilian, because um, they're often uh, they're often equalizing and not particularly good for white. Um, so so that uh, that opening theory uh, is where I would sort of point you towards. Um, but yeah, thank you very much for sending that game in uh, the real. Uh, really, um, yeah, good opportunity to get a little bit more into the weeds on. Uh, 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 you know, deeper Sicilian open opening theory, and uh, overall, uh, pretty interesting. Um, thank you very much for that. Uh, so let's take a look at the next one. Um, this is uh, this is Hans Joe's game. Um, and he uh, I haven't seen it yet, but um, but uh, he had some um, notes on it himself. So uh, yeah, always feel free to send uh, send notes on your games. Uh, they're usually pretty interesting. Um, and, uh, you know, they're, they, I would say they're, they're almost always helpful in terms of analysis and focus. Um, yeah, no, uh, uh, Tarash, um, I guess, uh, I guess we can do your game this stream. Um, you know, one of the games that I wanted to show this stream was Corrupted. So, um, so I guess we can take a look at your, uh, at your game this stream if, uh, you know, just since, since there's a slot, um, open. Yeah, yeah, we can do that. Um... I'll try to go back and uh, and uh, try to figure out how to fix that corruption, but um, yeah, unfortunately, uh, one of the game's slots uh, didn't uh, it wasn't a retrievable game from Chess.com. Um, but yeah, let's get yours in. Uh, let's get yours in at the end of the stream, Tarash. Um, uh, yeah. Um, so here, uh, this is a game played by White. Um, you know, it's basically White as uh, you know playing e4 against a flank opening. Um, this has some characteristics, I guess, of, I mean, it's basically a modern, modern Pyrrhic. Um, uh, Black's kingside gets a little bit more loose with h6. Um, and, uh, overall, I guess, um, you know, threats on f6, g5. Um, uh, Wolfgang was focused on queen c2 as a blunder. Um, let's see if the, uh, you know, first let's see if the eval actually agrees with that. Um, or maybe he's referring to a different queen c2. Uh, I want to make sure that I I, um, I follow his note on this. Um, yeah, so queen c2 uh, queen c2 um, uh, seems to be a um, yeah uh, queen c2 is is played in the opening. Um, I'm not sure it's a blunder. Uh, the ev all right. So the pre queen c2 eval is uh, is plus. Point eight, and queen c2 steers it a bit towards equality, I guess, um, but still point two. I don't see any problem with it, really. Uh, you know, it's an interesting, uh, it's an interesting question. Um, yeah, I, I guess I, you know, I wouldn't call it a blunder. Um, certainly, you know, maybe, maybe they're uh, proposing a different, um, you know, a different move here, uh, but. Positionally speaking, I don't really see a problem. Um, I'll try to focus less on the eval. I guess the eval goes from 1.4 to 0.3. Weird. Um, I guess, I don't know. Um, the engine seems to like this E5 uh, line, so let's take a look at the E5 line and what the improvement there might have been. Um, uh, this does allow white to orient an attack towards the, the king side. Um, but uh, but queen c2, I think you know has some value in that it uh, it um, orients pieces towards the queen side as well. I mean, it basically sets up the um, you know the queen behind the bishop in order to uh, to try to undermine the g6 square. Um, on g queen g6, I guess f5 isn't played. Um, I guess uh, I guess what I would say um, here is uh, is probably the error relating to um, Queen C2, um, you know, basically is uh, aligning another piece behind a um, you know a diagonal that's blocked. Um, this is uh, this is not particularly good for uh, for White. Um, you know, uh, here, uh, yeah, I mean, basically, you know, the Bishop is already kind of um, fighting against this uh, this E4 um, blockage. Uh, so adding the queen there doesn't really add much. Um, you know, I guess I wouldn't say it's particularly bad or it's a particularly large misplacement of the queen. Um, but uh, but black's going to close this uh, this diagonal. So aligning the um, the queen uh, along a closed diagonal uh, is sort of an inefficient move. 
Um, blunder, I think, is is an aggressive way to to, to phrase it, but um, I think there are potentially um, moves here for White that are more productive. Um, the computer suggesting uh, e5 that's ambitious. Um, that's probably a um, you know a move that's not uh, you know going to be you know basically that that's a move that requires a lot of tactical um, a lot of tactical foresight. Um, you know, it's it's a long move to uh, to be calculating on the fly on on the stream. That's what the engine suggests. Um, I'm I'm gonna look at knight c4 for a more fundamental perspective. Um, you know, knight c4 basically develops the knight to an outpost uh, where it looks pretty strong. Um, you know, d5, uh, pawn takes d5, pawn takes d5, knight e5 um, moves it to a different outpost where it's pretty strong. Um, but overall, uh, yeah, knight c4, I think, uh, is a line that, um, you know, looks pretty, you know, pretty playable for white. Uh, it, it's more of a development, it's more of a development with a transparent, um, uh, you know, a transparent, um, you know, reason for being played. Uh, knight, uh, this knight becomes much more mobile on, uh, on c4 as opposed to, um, d2. Uh, you know, this knight doesn't really have anywhere to go to progress. Um, so moving uh, moving the knight to c4, um, you know, uh, does allow it to uh, to have a uh, you know a, a more well established clear route forward. Um, you know, basically the engine I think is aiming for a purposeful move um, as white here, uh, and uh, and queen c2 after this um, diagonal is blocked by e5, uh, this e4 pawn is stuck there. Um, is uh, is probably you know probably characterizes as a um, as a more uh, you know is as a move that's not as purposeful. Uh, so here you know I don't know maybe queen queen e2 potentially um, at least with these lines of diagonal uh, you know you have uh, the idea of moving the queen to the um, to the king side. Um, I think I think white you know should try to uh, you know mobilize pieces towards the king side. Um, but queen c2 uh, is not a very efficient way to do it. Knight c4, knight e3, maybe, um, you know, with a, like, a d5 push. Um, but, uh, but the purposefulness of the move um, is, kind of, uh, is kind of undermined by, uh, by e5 here. Um, so that's why, uh, that's why I, would, I think the eval moves against you, and, and uh, I wouldn't call it a blunder, I would just call it you know, mostly a, a tempo and a, a non-improving move. Um, you know, this is a, a situation, uh, particularly, you know, particularly when there are, you know, potential attacking chances on the king side, um, that a purposeful move is, is really one that has the most value. So I'm thinking knight c4. Um, uh, engine suggests e5 with tactical play. That looks complicated. Um, i I not comfortable. Uh, I guess let's go through it, but... Um, not comfortable, uh, you know, a advocating that when I haven't seen the full tactical conclusion of it. Uh, maybe pawn takes f6. Uh, yeah, overall here, uh, I think, you know, this is a, this is a very simplified position. Um, you know, black's king side is open. Uh, Black looks, you know, the position in the center is definitely very complicated. Uh, you know, there, there's diagonals. There's this bishop uh, offering for force in reverse along this diagonal. Um, it's uh, it's really tricky. Um, so uh, so I'm not comfortable advocating e5 without spending you know half an hour thinking about it. Uh, but uh, but from a fundamental perspective, queen c2 is is not purposeful, and that's why that move uh, has um, you know is has shortcomings. Uh, knight c4 improves the knight's position. It's a fundamentally correct move. Um, uh, that's why uh, that's why queen c2 is a, or knight c4 is at least an improvement over queen c2. Nothing wrong with queen c2. Just uh, uh, yeah, overall uh, I think there's there's there may be better uh, there may be better options for white here, uh, which is uh, why um, the engine deems it to be a less valuable move. Um, but even after it, uh, the engine is still close to equality or maybe even slightly better for white. Um, uh, this I'm not sure Queen C2 is the um, the move where the eval deteriorates. I actually think it's a little bit further on here. Um, Knight F5. Uh, you know here um, there's another kind of uh, big shift in the eval. Um, Knight F5 uh, looks like it. Does this hang a pawn or it gets close? Um, with uh, with Knight F5, um, this line uh, this line hangs a pawn. 
Uh, so bishop takes, pawn takes, knight e7. And, uh, and this f5 uh, pawn, which could have been very valuable as an attacking resource, um, is, uh, is lost. Um, you know, f6 is the best alternative. But, um, but the queen c2, I don't think, was the error here. Queen c2 was inefficient. Um, uh, but we all make inefficient moves. Uh, you know, every grandmasters make inefficient moves or slightly inefficient moves. Um, this uh, this knight f5 move, I think, is more of a tangible error. Um, this uh, this loses the pawn. Uh, ends up being the e4 pawn turning into the f5 pawn. Um, but uh, but that pawn uh, that pawn ends up getting lost for white. Um, so just uh, just yeah, I guess counting out the maneuverability here. Um, knight g4 is tempting because it's a counter to this knight on um, f4. Uh, knight knight f5 here is tempting uh, because it's a counter to the f4 knight. Um, but overall, uh, I think um, uh, you know you probably uh, the engine is advocating like moving the the rook or doing something si that's significantly more conservative than that. Um, if you just uh, you know it's it's better to play a, a non-advancing move than a, than a move that loses a pawn. Um, ideally, you'll find a move that doesn't do either. Uh, here, you know, the engine is advocating c4 and c5 push. Uh, you know, basically, the idea is that you're pretty locked up on the um, uh, the king side, so you might as well um, try to uh, get like an opposite flank or center attack to try to um, direct some resources towards uh, towards the center as opposed to the king side. Um, but at the end of the day, uh, here. Um, uh, you know, basically this this loses a pawn, so we know that it's not that. Um, that's what I would point to as as the blunder for this game, uh, not uh, not Queen C2. Um, Queen C2 uh, was uh, was inefficient, but the real eval shift uh, came with uh, came with um, uh, Knight F5 and Bishop takes F5 and uh, and the Knight bringing another attacker on the F5 pawn. Um, overall, very interesting game. Uh, thank you very much, Hans Joe uh, Wolfgang for uh, for. Um, uh, sending me that game. Please keep sending them. Super helpful this morning. Uh, really an interesting game. Um, but uh, but Queen C2 uh, is is one focus. But uh, but the Knight F5 I think was a more decisive error there. Um, overall, really interesting. Uh, thank you very much for sending it. Um, uh, cool. Um, on to the next one. Uh, let's take a look. Um, Cool. Uh, another Vienna game. Vienna game is interesting. Um, before uh, before I really get into the um, to the aspects of the Vienna game, um, I want to show everyone something that we've sort of looked at on the stream and was instructive for me. Um, here, so so this is the straightforward Vienna game, right? Um, you know, uh, knight to c e4, e5, knight c3, knight f6, f4. Um, this is a Falkbeer Gambit um, Vienna game. Um, uh, there's actually a very well-defined uh, break between the best and second best moves for black here. Um, this is something that we we discovered, um, but uh, but there's multiple um, there's multiple lines here, and uh, and one is very clearly the best for black, and yet doesn't always get played. Um, so if you're ever playing the black side against the Vienna Gambit or against the uh, the Falkbeer Gambit in the Vienna game, um, the really only playable move um, for black here is d5. Um, you know, you can see it's like a 90% option. Um, so it is, you know, it is known that it's objectively the best, but it's objectively the best by like 0.7 pawns, almost a pawn. Um, D5 is the move. Uh, anything else leads to a, um, uh, an advantage for white, a lasting advantage for white. The refutation is pretty objectively D5 here. Um, other moves are not very good for, uh, for black. Um, so for anyone watching this and, and learning this opening, and if you ever face the black side of it, it's three d five. It's not pawn takes pawn, and it's not anything else. It's uh, it's objectively d five here. Um, this is an example of a game where that doesn't happen. Um, pawn takes f four, and uh, and white's showing an almost one pawn advantage. Um, you know, there's still you know uh, a few different options here. Bishop c four is one. Um, e five is probably. I mean, the, I I would lean towards the more conservative knight e three or knight f three, but. Here, um, you know, white basically establishes an early lasting advantage. Um, uh, there's some tactical complexity here. Bishop e2 is an error. Queen e2 is better. Um, yeah, queen e2 is better than bishop e2. Um, you know, white's able to hold on to this pawn, um, and uh, and white's um, positional advantage is not clear after giving back the uh, the um, you know basically now white has sacrificed two pawns. 
uh, and uh, and doesn't have an obviously better position. Um, so black, uh, you know, black shows an advantage here. Um, the correct move is queen e2, uh, defending the e5 pawn. Um, uh, Knight f3. I, I I vote knight f3 for white um, out of this uh, out of this position. Um, it's straightforward. It's developing. It's probably pretty easy to play as white. Um, e5 uh, adds a, a whole layer of complexity to the mix um, that uh, that ends up resulting in a two pawn black advantage here. Um, so I would say uh, you know this is probably um, you know th this is weaker for uh, for black. You know weaker for for uh, for white. Um, from uh, not from this point, but from uh, from this point here, um, this uh, this gets really tactical. Uh, black showing a 1.4 edge. Knight takes d4 was not correct. Um, you know, black can play queen d6 and be pretty safe. Uh, try to get a more conservative um, uh, you know situation. Um, yeah, knight takes d4 uh, not really that great to be honest. Um, it hangs the knight. Uh, you know, this is uh, this you know, there's the trade of two uh, pieces for a rook, which is unfavorable to black. Um, you know, white shows a big eval advantage after. Um, so yeah, uh, here, um, uh, it's 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 very tactical. Um, the one, the most instructional thing, uh, you know, the the very early instructional thing take away from this, um, black uh, playing black against uh, uh, this um, this opening. D5 is the move, very objectively. Um, we've gone through this like at length uh, in previous stream, um, but uh, but there's no other move for uh, for black that's really that acceptable. Um, D5 uh, is what black should play here as uh, as the refutation to this uh, this Vienna gambit. Um, Queen E2, uh, a tactical you know a tactical change basically. Um, you know this black F4 pawn. Will probably fall at some point, um, but uh, but Queen E2 secures a lasting advantage for White. Um, White should come out of Pawn takes F4 with a lasting advantage, as as our previous analysis has shown. So um, here, uh, Queen E2, um, Knight F3, and uh, and then uh, this trade uh, was kind of not the greatest concept for uh, for Black. Um, you know, White ends up uh, solidifying a solid advantage here. And uh, you know, winning a rook and pawn endgame is the way that he chose to uh, to transpose it down. Um, in terms of uh, in terms of um, analysis here, uh, it's a very tactical game. Um, Black is proactive in uh, in making sure that um, he uh, you know basically Black is proactive in making sure that he um, establishes a tactical uh, situation. But the tactics aren't um, necessarily that great. Um, the one improvement, you know, to this point, basically, um, you know, I would I would say a slight improvement is probably knight f3 or the more common bishop c4. Uh, those two together are, you know, 90% of this theory, more, 95% of this theory. Um, so so e5 is not the right play for white. Um, the, the right play here is knight f3 or bishop c4. Um, knight f3 is the second most popular move. I choose that because it's conservative and it um, doesn't uh, it doesn't really um, expand the uh, you know it basically doesn't really you know it doesn't really um, uh, expand the attacking chances for black. Uh, e5 is is just a very double edged move to play in a position. Um, you know if you're the white player in the Vienna Gambit, um, anything other than d5 um, should make you pretty happy here. Uh, so, so from this position, I would argue that you should know the next, uh, you know, the follow-up moves, because um, you've secured an advantage with uh, with Black's acceptance of this, um, uh, you know, of this gambit. Uh, so here, um, uh, you know, I guess I would say, um, you know, th this is this is there are two things here. So it was very tactical. So I don't think I can offer much in terms of improvement on the engine. Um, like you know, the engine is tactically better than everybody. Um, so, uh, so engine-related tactical review is is the best for tactical games. Um, you know, I can I can offer things and I can um, uh, you know determine that a particular tactic was cool or, or you know um, pretty, but um, the uh, the um, the main thing about uh, tactical games is that um, you know engine analysis beats human analysis for almost anything. 
uh, humans can add value um, on the strategic side. Uh, so, so giving strategic advice, uh, I think, is you know this this game is mostly tactical, um, and an engine does better tactics than I do, uh, and almost anybody does. Um, so, so from this point, uh, you know, the calculating out this central tactic, um, uh, you know, I'm just going to be reading out engine output basically. Um, uh, so, so you know, cool, cool tactic, um, but uh, but obviously black makes a miscalculation and white plays it correctly, so so it's a win there. Um, what I can offer is, uh, yeah, it is. No, no, for sure, it's definitely a cool game. Um, uh, this uh, this two sack, uh, um, you know, this two piece sack for the rook is is an interesting way for uh, for black to play it. Um, but uh, yeah, uh, but but basically the game is decided after this uh, this tactical, um, uh, you know, this this tactical error by black, this over ambitious uh, uh, combination. Um, so so I guess what I can offer you in terms of analysis is. Um, uh, this opening is very, you know, this opening is something we've gone over before, and it's interesting. Um, the only playable move for black is d5. Um, anything else is a game that white should have a solid initiative in. Um, d5, uh, you know, d5 is not, you know, d5 is the correct play. Anything else, you're in good place as white. Um, and then the, the, the most concrete takeaway is, okay, in this particular variation of this particular opening, um, you've secured a potential initiative, uh, an advantage for white that should be, you know, somewhat lasting. Um, how do you respond to it? And it's either knight f3 or bishop c4. Um, I'm gonna, st I'm gonna uh, make a judgment call and steer away from e5 because I think that that, um, you know, this is unclear and probably tactically too, um, uh, you know, too double-edged for black. It's a much easier game to play, um, you know, knight f3 or bishop c4, um, particularly, you know, at a level where you know tactics are more danger, more more double-edged than they might otherwise be. Um, uh, so yeah, so I'm gonna say knight f3 over e5 here. Um, it's up to you. Uh, it's a stylistic thing, and e5 does have a has some um, games in the opening book, um, but I I know that knight f3 gives you a, an easier game to play. Um, hey, thank you very much for the um, uh, for the observe re uh, contingency. Appreciate it. Um, so yeah, so uh, so e5, queen e7, and uh, and knight f3 here, uh, looks good. Um, so yeah, so I'll say knight f3 over uh, over um, e5, bishop c4 over e5. But it's your opening, so uh, so if you're comfortable playing a more double-edged thing, hey, thank you for the highlighted message, Dennis. Thank you for joining the stream. Um, uh, so yeah, so. Um, uh, with neither of those getting played, and let's say you go into the situation where you say, okay, e I know e5 is more double-edged, but it offers some interesting attacking chances, and uh, and it still shows a positive white eval. Um, I would say, you know, that's um, that's a choice, uh, and it makes um, you know it makes sense. Like you know, you can definitely um, you know uh, play it, um, and it, the percentage is actually pretty good for white, but. I think this is too dangerous to play unless you really feel comfortable with the tactics here. Um, on queen e7, uh, you, you know you've, you've you've now we've now gone into the situation where um, you're not still playing e5 as opposed to knight f3 or bishop c4. Um, on queen e7, uh, hold on to the um, uh, hold on to this uh, this pawn. Um, your positional advantage is not clear enough to justify a uh, a two pawn sacrifice. Um, so here. Uh, queen e2 defending this uh, this e5 pawn. I'm also sort of curious about knight to f3, um, but uh, but the main point or d4 I guess also defends the pawn. Um, but the uh, the main point here is that uh, that um, one one pawn gambit here is uh, is leads to a good position after um, d5 isn't played. Uh, but um, uh, but giving up the second pawn um, really creates a problem. Uh, for anyone who's new to the chat, uh, Jen is my girlfriend. She helps out a lot with these uh, and a lot of the administrative stuff that I'm not particularly good at. Um, she, uh, she, um, uh, yeah. If, if there's a, that's a good idea. If there's anything that anyone wants in terms of channel points, um, we can uh, definitely try to make things more fun. Uh, I appreciate you guys being here, and I appreciate you guys accumulating uh, channel points. Um, so, uh, so giving options for uh, for channel point redemption. Uh, just let us know if there's anything. Uh, that you'd like to see or anything in particular. Um, <laughs> uh, that's an idea. Um, uh, maybe um, uh, that is an idea. Um, 
we'll uh, we'll we'll come up with some ideas. Uh, maybe emojis or something like that. Um, you know, my hope is that eventually uh, we'll get um, a lot more games for analysis than might otherwise be available. Uh, so, um, uh, you know, I guess um, you know at that point maybe maybe we can use because uh, uh, I because I maybe we can use a uh, channel points as like a priority thing maybe. Um, that's just an idea that I'm thinking about. I don't know what you guys think, but uh, but I feel like uh, uh, channel points for uh, for game analysis. Um, seems like a fair trade that uh, that keeps the channel free, um, but offers a uh, yeah. All right, uh, uh, a silly hat as a uh, as a redemption uh, for uh, for uh, channel points is an idea that um, we will put under review. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, thank you very much for that. Uh, I um, but yeah. Uh, thank you very much for this game. Um, it offers an interesting opportunity to look at this. Um, uh, you know a. Um, it offers an opportunity for us to um, uh, examine this uh, this Vienna Gambit theory, um, but uh, but yeah, um, I also should learn the raid. I don't really know that super well, uh, but um, but yeah. Uh, anyways, um, this uh, this overall turns into a win for White, um, but uh, but yeah, move uh, move three is very well established as what's the best for Black, um, and. Uh, uh, yeah. Anyways, after that, um, uh, you know, White's in pretty good shape after this over ambitious combination. Um, yeah. Uh, interesting idea. Cool. Um, uh, yeah. So, so I guess my last game was corrupted. Um, if uh, if uh, you guys can point towards, um, you know, which uh, which game this was. Um, I couldn't. Uh, I couldn't seem to find it. But if this matches a link that anyone else, uh, you know, sends in or, or knows knows exactly which game this is, um, give me a second and uh, and I'll take a look and see. Um, I'm sort of curious if I can. I I want to find it. Obviously, I want to do the review of the game. But um, but that link uh, seems to not work. Um, yeah. Cool. Uh, thanks. Uh, I think it is. I think maybe it is Aphelion. Uh, let's take a look. Um, uh. No, yeah, no worries. Um, let me uh, let me try again. Uh, uh, I also I also said I would get Tarashin uh, just as a follow up. Um, cool. Let me pull it. Uh, thank you very much for for saying something, uh, uh, Felion. Um, I want to get to it for sure. Uh, so sorry, it's my bad for uh, for pulling the wrong one. Um, let me get that right now. Uh, Oh, of course. Yeah, of course. No, 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 no problem at all. No, 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 no. Let's uh, let's do this for sure. Um, I'll make a, a but I'll uh, close the stream on uh, um, uh, on uh, uh, Tarasha's game. Um, so thank you all very much for sending it in, and uh, glad we were able to quickly solve that. Yeah, no, thank you very much, Aphelion. I appreciate it. Um, yeah. So uh, so here, um, uh, e4, e6, d5. Um, let's uh, let's look at this. Um, Aphelion is playing white here, uh, and I'm pretty curious about this. Um, uh, sorry, I'll put it in analysis mode. Um, uh, wow, yeah, very solid game for Aphelion, though. Uh, cool. Um, French defense with exchange, uh, not an opening that I know super well. Um, we had an interesting game, uh, you know, out of this theory yesterday. Um, and I think we came to the conclusion that the correct move here is uh, is knight c3. Um, but uh, either way, um, yeah, so maybe e5 or knight c3. Uh, pawn takes d4, I think, makes things too simple. Um, you know, this position leans towards symmetry. Uh, so on d5, pawn takes d5, um, this is... Uh, uh, yeah, oh, that's, that's actually really interesting. Um, uh, but yeah, so pawn takes d5 is actually not the uh, the the, um, the move here. Um, you know, we were looking at it at a similar position. Um, out of uh, we it was actually yesterday it was e4 c6 knight c3 d5, um, and we were looking at a similar position. And it was pretty clear out of the Karo Khan especially that um, that pawn takes was not the correct uh, response. Um, it was uh, it was either knight c3 or e5. Um, but this kind of um, oversimplification. Uh, unless white is playing for a more drawish type idea, 
um, you know, sort of neutralizes White's um, uh, initiative. Um, this uh, this position is very symmetrical. Um, cool. Yeah, that's awesome. Uh, that's awesome, Aphelion. Um, uh, Bishop d3, knight c6, um, castles. Uh, interesting. Um, yeah, cool. Uh, so here, um, yeah, this this uh, this looks like a pretty good win for White. Um, but um, but yeah, uh, let's look. Um, bishop d3, knight c6, and then uh, castles, bishop g4, c3, h6, bishop f4. Um, you know, white's, white's significantly better here. Um, you know, this, uh, this exchange, um, you know, I guess it's an established line, uh, but, um, but this will lead to, uh, to white's advantage not being greater than, uh, than equality. Um, that said, the French exchange is a very playable opening. Um, that's just what this is. Uh, this transposed into the French exchange. Um, bishop d3, knight c6, castles, bishop g4, c3. And, uh, and overall here, uh, you know, pretty much, you know, uh, very, uh, I guess, draw-focused. Um, but, but also uh, one that's not going to offer uh, black many chances. Um, yeah, no, I mean, the exchange French is an interesting line. Um, I've played it over the board. I, I played over the board. I definitely played over the board uh, sometimes if I have a good reason. Um, if I believe my opponent has a very strong French, uh, you know, book knowledge, um, I will, uh, I will play the French exchange, uh, knowing that that will lead me towards, uh, you know, towards equality and, and minimize um, Black's chances of winning. Uh, if I need a draw in a situation, you know, I, I occasionally I get draw games I'd like to draw against uh, IMs or that kind of thing. Um, uh, I will get a, I will be willing to play the French exchange. Um, you know, it allow you know, given that you've set up a drawish position for yourself, the French exchange allows for um, you to basically play as aggressively as you'd like. Um, it's uh, it's basically a pretty good um, you know, it's a it's a good opening um, to attack out of, uh, knowing that the chances that you lose are relatively low. Um, it looks here like uh, like White gets a pretty solid edge. Um, is a, is Knight e5 a tactical win here? Uh, yeah, knight e5. Okay, so knight e5 does generate a, a big tactic. Um, uh, a trades on e5 will make um, uh, white's attack on the king side like pretty monstrous. Very hard for for uh, for black to defend against. Um, so knight e5 here, fx takes. Um, yeah, no, no, totally. Um, uh, this looks uh, yeah, this looks pretty good. Um, f4 and then knight e5 um yeah i mean you know white really has a huge positional edge uh, not, not a material edge um just these pieces are oriented towards uh, this king side and this king side is going to be completely vulnerable um so yeah um i guess uh i guess c3 bishop f4 um yeah, it's an awesome game. I mean, you know, this this does get um, very, you know, th this position here really is, uh, you know, a, a situation in which you're going to have many different types of ability to um, to attack black aggressively, um, and uh, you know, the engines evaluating that one of them will work. Um, you know, how do you advance this this uh, this um, game? Like, you know, maybe rook f3, rook, um, you know, f rook e f1. Uh, yeah, no, no. So I mean, you know, black basically is already in pretty serious trouble. Um, this uh, this king side is under resourced in terms of uh, uh, you know in terms of um, developing pieces. Uh, but um, but here, uh, this offers um, this offers white some good chances. Uh, you know, basically, if if white can launch a quick attack here, and I think rook f three, rook f one is probably the way to do it. Um, this uh, this king side uh, is definitely going to break. Um, so, uh, so yeah, um, overall, uh, I think, um, this is, uh, you know, this is a good way to play it. Uh, let's go back a little bit just to, to see how black has misstepped here to allow, um, this kind of, uh, you know, this kind of opportunity. Um, I think, yeah, 
Queenie 1, well, I like Queenie 1 here, actually. Um, Queenie 1 is a pretty thoughtful move, if you think about it. Um, it does resolve uh, this pin on F3, and it basically sets up Knight E5. Yeah, so I really like this, um, uh, you know, I, I like this first Knight E5, actually. Um, you know, the fact that you can fix both the pin on your queen and, uh, and um, uh, the threat on, to double your, uh, your pawns on the bishop file um, is valuable. Uh, this looks good. Um, and by this point, uh, and by this point, white has basically started a big attack. Um, I'm wondering if white ha or if black had any better opportunities to defend here. Um, uh, yeah, knight knight e5 is just too advantageous for uh, for white. Um, knight e4 is the suggested move. Um, I guess knight e4 basically, um, you know, allows for an exchange. This this basically shuts down um, White's, uh, uh, you know, more powerful light squared bishop. Um, attacks on h7 are going to become less uh, less possible here. So on knight e4, bishop takes, and then maybe uh, maybe f5. Um, you know, this this turning this into a connected passed pawn would be uh, would be a good chance for Black at least. Um, uh, knight g4 allowing knight e5 um, will transpose into a pretty unfavorable position, um, uh, you know, uh, for uh, for white, um, or an unfavorable position for black. Um, but uh, I guess an improvement to be to look at for black would be like knight to e4. Um, queen e6 also looks playable. Um, gonna try to figure that one out, um, but. Yeah, knight e5 here. Then what happens? Um, uh, I guess this makes that attack less. Oh, okay. So yeah, I guess one of the key parts of um, knight e5 as a tactic um, is that it basically forces uh, white to trade here. Um, without this knight on g4, uh, knight e5 isn't a prompting move. With uh, with knight e5, you know, basically, um, you know, the queen can't move to e6 because there's a threat. There's a double threat on uh, on the knight on g4. Um, so here, uh, this looks pretty good for uh, you know this looks pretty good for white. Um, but yeah, I guess I would argue that um, uh, yeah, uh, you know, knight knight g4 sort of plays into the strength of white's knight e5 here. Um, knight e5 is still a great tactic um, because it's uh, it determines that this position here um, is just uh, very winning for for white uh, you know as a move but or basically it's a very winning position um, for white uh, this uh, this king side is gonna um, be under some some really severe pressure um, and black's not gonna have the the pieces required to uh, to um, block that pressure um, but here, um, moves that aren't knight g4 provide a somewhat better defensive resource uh, for um, uh, pro provide a somewhat defensive resor uh, resource for white or for black. Sorry, um, uh, but after uh, but after knight g4 and the forced trade on e5, uh, it's pretty much over. This is a this is a huge uh, space advantage, huge central advantage, and uh, and the king side's gonna gonna collapse. Um, so. Yeah. Anyways, it's interesting. Yeah. Thank you. No. 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 Thank you. This is an awesome. Uh, this is an awesome tactical um, uh, demonstration. Uh, knight e5 was a great move and a great find, and and uh, you know you deserve to win the game for finding that. Um, there were uh, there were better. Um, uh, you know there there were better ways for Black to have played it proactively, but once that happened, it was a, a really good uh, a good catch and a, and a good tactical win. Um, so yeah, pretty awesome. Um, uh, so here, um, yeah, I, I mean, the move that I actually, you know, one of the moves that I like the most here um, from a conceptual perspective is queen e1. Um, uh, but everything was pretty strong. Um, and you, you were able to turn what is a very drawish game into a very clear win by move, uh, by move 16. Yeah, no, no, of course. No, thank you very much for sending the game and uh, a lot of interesting stuff. I mean, um, uh, this does show, you know, how um, extreme a, uh, a positional advantage can get. Um, you know, a king, this kingside attack, uh, which is, you know, several moves away, 
um, is already predetermined to be a great strategy as uh, you know for white against uh, against d5. Um, uh, yeah, sure. No, no, we'll take a look at, uh, at yours uh, in a minute, uh, Tarash. But um, overall, uh, yeah, this is a great win. Great, um, very interesting one for Aphelion. So thank you very much uh, for showing uh, for showing this. Um, yeah, that that's an awesome kingside attack. Um, you know, Black didn't really make too many missteps in order to to have that happen. Um, but uh, but basically, you know, White's flank attack versus Black's flank attack. Um, White's flank attack went much faster, and uh, Black did speed it up a little bit with uh, with Knight G4 forcing the trade on. Uh, you know, after Knight E5. Um, but either way, you were headed towards. Uh, you know, even with Queen E6 or Knight E4. Um, uh, White has played well and uh, and secured uh, an initiative and uh, and basically a, a good opportunity to start attacking on the king side. Um, Knight g4 really just expedites things for White. Um, overall, super interesting game. Um, yeah, great a uh, great um, quick game. Tw you know, 20 or so move uh, win. 20, I mean 25, I guess, but it's pretty much over by move 20 or 18 even. Um, yeah, awesome. A uh, good a uh, good. Good tactical play and uh, and a good idea with knight e5 uh, uh, forcing um, forcing that trade uh, and the big space advantage uh, uh, on the uh, the light squared diagonal against h7. Um, yeah, thanks a lot for that. Really interesting, uh, cool stuff. Um, but yeah, thank you for sending it in, Aphelion. I appreciate you sending games in, and uh, yeah, feel free to send them in the future. I'm always happy to look at them, and, uh, and they're always interesting. Um, great win. Uh, cool. So now Tarash has one. Um, and uh, let me just go back in the chat and uh, and pull it. Um, thank you for sending it. Uh, yeah, I uh, it was really my my mistake. Uh, uh, I pulled the wrong link uh, for uh, for um, uh, Aphelion's game, but uh, but uh, I'm glad we were able to get to both. Um, yeah, so uh, so um, let's uh, let's take a look. Um, uh, Tarash was playing. Um, uh, yeah. Okay. So cool. Um, uh, so Tarash is playing black in this game, um, and let's, uh, let's try to figure it out. Um, Rui Lopez, uh, it's a Rui Lopez game, um, the white wins, uh, and Tarash is playing black. Um, Okay. I'm just gonna go through really quick and, and just uh, just see what happened. Um, yeah, yeah, no, no, of course, Poundro. No, thank you very much uh, for the um, uh, for sending the game. Um, I think it's probably gonna uh, you know depending on how um, full the schedule is for tonight. Um, it looks like I only have uh, three games in for the schedule tonight, um, but I think uh, I think Poundro, uh, we're gonna get to that probably tonight at 6:05 or uh, or tomorrow at 10 a.m. Eastern. Um, but one of those two slots, I, I think it's pretty, I think, you know, uh, unless there's a ton of Reddit comments, um, uh, it's going to be, it's going to be in either tonight's, uh, stream or, uh, or tomorrow morning stream. Um, but thank you very much for sending it, Poundro, and I'm really happy to have you, uh, as a, as a observer, um, and, and thank you for participating. Um, I, uh, but yeah, no, no, for sure. Um, my, uh, I'll, uh. Uh, how about I'll, I'll whisper you, I'll whisper, or no, no, you know what, since you posted it on Reddit, I'll just DM you on Reddit, um, after, after the stream to figure out whether it's going to be, uh, 6.05 or 10 a.m., but it's going to be one of those two. Um, so thank you very much for sending it, Poundro, and, and I appreciate you, um, uh, contributing to the stream. Uh, it works, uh, it works great when, uh, when people are interested in sending games, so, um, thank you very much for sending it. Um, yeah, no, no, I'll get back to you uh, on the DM uh, after uh, after the stream's over, and, and I'll, I'll have a chance to look at the schedule. Um, but yeah, so um, so uh, uh, Tarash uh, sent this game, and uh, I am curious. Um, interesting Rui Lopez game. Um, interesting. Okay, yeah, cool. Um, yeah, no, for sure, for for sure, Tarash. Uh, this this looks like a good game where we'll have an opportunity to discuss uh, some of the themes here. Um, I play uh, the Archangel, but this is the main line, uh, Rui Lopez. Um, so uh, so that's good. Um, Bishop c5, castles, castles c3. Um, so far so good. Uh, you know, main line Rui Lopez fairly equal. Um, h6 is probably a little bit passive here. Um, 
the main line here, by the way, is d6, uh, which does uh, does allow bishop to d5 potentially, um, but uh, but that leads to a weakened pawn structure for white. Um, it allows uh, it allows bishop to g5, um, which sets up uh, uh, yeah, which sets up some some good strength uh, from this pin on uh, on d8, um, and. Uh, uh, h6, uh, you know, is, is interesting. You know, h6 is interesting, um, but not the most, uh, not, not the most popular move. But I, I think it's probably fine. Um, it's just that, uh, d6, you know, h6 is fine. Uh, d6 is the preferred, uh, uh, martial attack is tactically complicated. You know, um, uh, there's some really beautiful games out of these super complicated, um, uh, you know, basically out of these super complicated, um, uh, you know, tactical openings. Um, the Traxler is a very cool one. Uh, you know, a lot of these, uh, you know, a lot of these very aggressive tactical openings um, lead to some some crazy attacks um, where uh, theory is explored. Um, I don't know them super well. Uh, you know, I always figured that you know, gr growing up and, and improving at chess, I always basically figured that um, there would be an opportunity for. Um, uh, you know, basically for um, this, you know, basically uh, interesting. Uh, cool. Yeah, that's cool, Felion. Um, uh, yeah, martial attack is good. Um, but uh, but the main point, you know, the reason why I, I think it's awesome that you send them, and please keep sending um, these uh, these aggressive tactical lines are actually super good for me to learn because um, my knowledge there is not so good. Um, you know, growing up, I always figured that I had better tactical knowledge and worse book knowledge than my opponents, um, so I always steered away from um, uh, yeah. So I always sort of steered away from um, these these well established aggressive uh, tactical lines because I figured my opponents would know them better than I would. Um, so so I, my knowledge in that theory is actually not very good at all, um, uh, and it's awesome that I now have an opportunity to review games out of it. And uh, and get to improve in those lines, like the Traxler line. I, I didn't even know that was a thing that existed, but it's very interesting. Um, uh, so um, so yeah, please send those games. Like if you wanted to send a martial attack game, that could be awesome instructional content that I would get a lot out of. Um, uh, but uh, but what I always did growing up was play fundamental, uh, you know, fundamentally correct um, uh, opening lines um, very aggressively. Uh, that's what I that would, that's what that was my strategy. Um, but as a result, like uh, martial attack, no, 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 for sure, and we'll we'll get to both. Um, you know, we'll I'm more just uh, uh, sort of explaining my background in it. Like uh, martial attack is, uh, yeah, martial attack is cool. These openings are cool, so um, uh, it's great. It's great to have an opportunity to look them over. Um, so I guess my my um, you know my I, I think the martial attack is a cool aggressive opening. Um, that offers, uh, you know, a double-edged position that um, might uh, be helpful to the person with good tactical execution um, or great book knowledge. Um, but uh, the, um, yeah, no, no, definitely, Aphelion. Uh, we'll, um, uh, we'll take a look. Um, hey, thank you very much uh, for the observe, the reel. I appreciate it. Um, yeah, so that's what, I, and thank you very much, CL Daz, for also for the observe. Um, uh, I did not know there was a 36 um, uh, book move uh, uh, book move opening. Um, that's pretty impressive, but um, uh, cool. I no, I didn't know that uh, there was anything that um, that extended. Uh, yeah, no, the martial attack over the board is is a rough position, and, and uh, I've often wanted to steer clear of that. Um, awesome, thanks, uh, thanks, Dennis. Uh, cool, I'll add that. Uh, I I am kind of curious about that. Um, I don't know if that's one you'd want reviewed, but I'll add it to my notes uh, for the uh, for the stream. Um, but yeah, anyways, um, these uh, these aggressive opening lines um, are uh, are tricky. Um, uh, Queen e two, Bishop a seven, and uh, and here, um, yeah, okay, cool. But let's uh, let's get back to this game. Um, but but my main point is that my um, my knowledge of the martial attack is pretty unsophisticated since I always sidestep things like those uh, as I was um, you know kind of uh, trying to actively improve. Um, yeah, no, for sure, Tarash. Uh, and we've got a we've got you know a good solid uh, few minutes to to take a look at it. Um, 
Uh, this is mainline character or mainline uh, Rui Lopez. Um, uh, H6 is a deviation. D6 is the main line, but H6, H6 should also probably be okay. Um, uh, D4 is probably a play that White can make. Um, D4 is complicated. Uh, D4 basically allows for um, a lot of pressure to be exerted on Black. Um, you know, uh, D White has set up uh, C3 or has set up D4 with C3. Um, so here, I think uh, D4, pawn takes D4, pawn takes D4, and uh, and White has a um, a pretty strong center that's going to be difficult for Black to um, you know uh, exert too much pressure on. I mean, Black can exert pressure, but but not is not going to um, successfully break through here. Uh, Bishop B6, I think, is uh, is the idea. Um, uh, D4 E5 um, uh, leads to some um, good opportunities and uh, and a relatively restricted position for Black. Um, so this uh, this opportunity was kind of missed for white. Um, it often is. Uh, D4 is often a resource that, um, yeah, Jen is here. Jen uh, is, uh, is being a great, um, uh, you know, super helpful in supporting the stream. Hi! Um, but yeah, uh, so <laughs> on D6. Thank you for pointing out every time I walk by, I like it. Yeah, no, no, so Jen is here. Um, uh, knight G3, bishop to G4, and... Uh, <laughs> Jen's gonna be on the silly hat um, uh, proposal, um, uh, yeah. But um, but yeah, it's an idea. Uh, we will have to we'll have to think about that. <laughs> um, Jen is great, uh, and she's super helpful and supportive of the stream. So uh, so that's awesome. Um, <laughs> uh, all right, thanks 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 for the thought, Ophelion. Uh, we'll we'll figure we'll figure that out. The idea is under review. Um, <laughs> Uh, but um, but here, uh, yeah, um, this ends up trading off into a, um, a favorable uh, pawn um, uh, center for uh, for black uh, or for for white. Sorry, he ends up uh, getting this extra pawn, and uh, and that ends up being a sufficient material advantage. Um, but let's uh, let's go back and let's look at um, black and white's uh, uh, winning strategies here. Um, here, uh, H3. Bishop h5, yeah. So so let's let's slow this down. Um, Bishop g4 is interesting here. Um, there's uh, hey, what's up, Amet? How are you? Uh, Bishop g4, um, uh, you know, is is a good play. Um, but h3 and then Bishop h5, I think, is tactically unplayable. Um, there's a tactic here that comes up a lot in uh, in Rui Lopez, and I've seen it um, elsewhere. But basically, this um, this attack with a peace sacrifice and a discovery on uh, on the attack. So let's just see. Knight takes h5. Knight takes h5, and then knight to g5 here. Um, sometimes this comes as a um, a discovery of the queen on the uh, the undefended piece on h5 as knight takes e5. But here, black has rook takes e5 as a resource, so that's not possible to be played. Um, here, knight takes h5, knight g5. And uh, and it still is a positionally. It this doesn't win a pawn or a central pawn like uh, like that discovered attack on um, queen h. Uh, you know, of queen h5 sometimes does. Um, this instead offers an opportunity for um, for knight to g5 to be played, and uh, and an uh, and an opportunity um, to attack with uh, uh, and basically you know on pawn takes um, g5, queen takes h5. Um, this is a, a real attack. I mean this. Um, you know this bishop's focused on f7, and this uh, this pawn's focused on, and this bishop's focused on g5. Um, the combination of those two uh, is pretty dangerous for black. So it's a, a sacrifice that the white could potentially make here. Um, something to keep in mind, just in terms of um, you know making sure that you've uh, defended um, uh, h5 adequately. Uh, yeah, I, I mean potentially. Um, I. Uh, uh, I guess I would say yes. Um, knight f6, bishop e3, queen a3. Um, yeah, no, I think I think big picture that's um, uh, you know something that um, uh, that you know you you definitely have to to, to keep that threat in mind. Um, I, I wouldn't make the blanket statement uh, bishop to h5 is bad. There's many positions in which it's playable, but this is a, in this particular one. Um, this allows for some dangerous threats via discovery. Uh, so yeah, anyways, um, yeah, yeah, that's what I would say. Instructively, just keep it in mind. Um, 
d6, rook e8, bishop g4. Um, and that's and that's a tactical error uh, that black you know the white doesn't capitalize on here, but uh, but provided white a a, a tactically strong opportunity. Um, and Jen Jen walking out the door, uh, but uh, I don't know she's probably getting uh, breakfast. Um, yeah, uh, Jen's the best. Um, but uh, but yeah, so um, how does white win without attacking? Um, that was an opportunity uh, for uh, for white. Um, yeah, white is white is basically being, you know, relatively passive here. Uh, bishop g4, h3, bishop h5. Um, this line, uh, this line offers opportunities. Um, I just want to make sure because I would still say this is relatively close to equality. Um, this this game, you know, considering that. Uh, 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 White didn't capitalize on that that um, hanging uh, or that that positional um, you know that tactic to improve position and ultimately win either the G or um, F pawns. Uh, that um, uh, that provided some opportunities for um, uh, that provided some opportunities for Black to to equalize. Um, D four is strong here. Um, you did the good uh, the good um, Rui Lopez uh, maneuver with. Uh, Knight, so so there's a there's a um, there's a uh, an opportunity here in um, a lot of Rui Lopez lines to move c5 controlling d4, uh, or basically actually it starts to move a four. Knight a5, threatening to uh, to to simplify with the bishop, then c5, then knight back to c6, um, making sure that uh, that um, White never establishes control of uh, of uh, the d4 square or has a lot of a challenge going up against the d4 square. Um, so that's a common theme. Uh, here, in terms of finding an actual move, uh, so uh, e5 simplifies um, the center here. Uh, I don't, it, and it shifts the eval um, pretty significantly towards white. Um, I, let's let's figure out exactly why that is. What's what's the better opportunity here? Um, I think rook. I mean, basically, um, you know, this d6 pawn is is in a lot of trouble. Uh, this um, uh, this d6 pawn um, is uh, you know pretty much going to hang here. Um, so I guess maybe queen c7 is is black's best tactical resource, um, and then uh, get rook to d8. Um, white is effectively attacking your most, um, your you know your most effective, you know your your most vulnerable point. Uh, this hanging pawn on d6. Um, so maybe bishop b3 uh, is the next move. Um, but you actually can, you know, white is making this effective attack. Um, but there is a tactically a tactical improvement on this defense, um, and it comes with this in between move threatening this um, bishop on c2. Uh, you know, white's traded into a, a complicated position. Um, in general, this type of pawn structure, uh, you know, is one that offers a spatial advantage to uh, to the person with the more advanced pawn. Um, I've talked a little bit about it as a general concept on the stream before, um, but uh, when pawns are aligned like this, neither one of them can advance, right? The e4, you know, if the black pawn advances, you know, it, and, and this is in the absence of other pieces there. Um, uh, interesting. Um, yeah, sorry, sorry about that. Uh, we'll take a, I'll take a look at the stream after and see if there's a, there's an issue here. Um, but, uh, but yeah, um, uh, yeah, uh, basically, um, this, uh, this rookie six here, um, is, uh, is, you know, basic. I think, I think white's main, um, conceptual idea that was good here. Um, was this attack on d6. So here, queen c7, and then, um, uh, and then basically um, uh, the in-between move attacks c2. Uh, that's, that's the valuable thing. Um, this, this was a good idea to um, exert pressure on um, black's most vulnerable point, uh, but this, uh, the, black has a tactical resource to hold on to this. Um, so anyways, um, Interesting. Yeah, no, no, I'll, uh, I'll check it out. Um, uh, I'll check it out, CLDAS. Uh, thank you for, for bringing that, uh, for bringing that to my attention. I'm curious. Uh, so, um, 
Uh, queen to c7 here, I think, is probably the um, you know the best play. Uh, did you have chances in the end game? Um, interesting question. So here's um, the the final end game here, right? Is um, you know basically is this pawn able to provide an opportunity to either queen or to um, allow white to win an additional pawn and sort of advance the um, you know advance the attack. Uh, I guess we can count the tempos here. Um, this is evaluated as equal. Uh, and rook and pawn endgames are technical and complicated. Uh, so, um, so I'm sure that I'm not going to do it justice here. Uh, f5, king e... Okay, so, so this allowed... Um, uh, this allowed... This defense allowed the, black, or the white king to outflank the, um, the white king. Or the black king. So, so with uh, with king to f5, um, this uh, you know basically this king can provide effective support to this pawn. Um, you know specifically, uh, say g5, king c5, rook c8, king um, uh, d6, rook d8, king c7 um, is is an inefficient way for black to play it. Um, but one that very clearly uh, illustrates the concept that uh, that the white king has outflanked the black king. Um, uh, here, um, this uh, you know this leads to um, you, you know basically allowing the white king to uh, to e4 um, provides white with a win uh, is the most simplified way to say it. Um, here, uh, it's a much more complicated problem. Um, I'm looking at, uh, yeah, no, 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 I'm, I'm not 100% sure about it, Tarash. Uh, the, main, um, the main point I don't really know. Uh, but um, this, you know, this is a, a tactically complicated endgame um, where the computer has evaluated drawing chances. Um, it's tough. These, these are tough and complicated endgames. Um, let's look at these, um, uh, let's look at the ideas here. Um, this is in the book line that um, Black draws. I'm a little surprised here that. Um, okay, so so I guess um, the the main point here is um, to get the Black King behind the pawn. That's what it was. Uh, this was the um, uh, this was the um, the most important thing here. So King to e6 or King to d6 here um, uh, solidifies the draw. Um, there's still, you know, a slight uh, engine calculation advantage, but, um, but yeah, that was that was the the, the main motif here. I think is uh, is um, uh, play the king to d6 to defend the uh, the d pawn. Um, this uh, this is the way to go. Um, interesting, um, but yeah. So uh, so with uh, with the in game issue, uh, you know, the king is able to advance on the c5 pawn. And uh, you know, particularly this um, this rook to e6. Uh, but overall, I think it's pretty good for uh, for black. Um, or so it's, it's overall pretty good for black in terms of drawing chances. Um, the the main uh, the main tactical um, uh, advance is uh, is king to d6 over king to uh, king to f6. Um, this uh, this prevents the white king from uh, from being able to get in there. Um, it's interesting. I feel like um, I feel like getting a uh, uh, a good, um, I mean, you know, I don't know. This was a, this was a bit of an error, I think, uh, you know, just in terms of end game, king f6. Um, but anyways, uh, interesting. Um, let's, uh, let's keep going. Um, so here, uh, d5, knight takes, queen takes, and this is uh this is the end game. So so this is the rook and uh, this is the rook and pawn uh, end game that I think um, is the most instructive. Uh, but anyways, um, the bigger errors, the larger errors here is you had a, a tactical. Re I th uh, white basically has a few tactical opportunities. Um, this is the first knight to g5 looks pretty solid. Um, uh, I'm sort of curious about what happens if um, you know black just uh, black just ignores it. Um, and the answer is the the threat on f7 is overwhelming, um, but that's a um, uh, you know that's a a way to uh, basically white miss that opportunity tactically. Um, the the next thing I think uh, to look at is uh, white um, effectively um, uh, forces a threat on d6. 
um, that's you know that's pretty strong for uh, for um, white. So I'm thinking, uh, you know, I, I, the the tactical play is to secure this um, this double attack on this bishop, and then follow it up with rook d8. Um, from a tempo perspective, the bishop plays to b uh, to b3, rook d8, and uh, at the very least, it's going to take a few more moves for white to secure new um, resources on this uh, on this hanging d6 pawn. Um, but uh, yeah, so, so I think I think that was the most. Um, this this is the the place where I would uh, allocate the most time to study. Um, you have a tactical resource here. Uh, these in between moves, um, you know, can be uh, tactical efficiencies that will save games for you. So queen c seven, rook d eight. Um, so yeah, so this is move um, twenty three, uh, and uh, yeah. Um, yeah, so so uh, so here, queen c seven, um, and uh, and basically, um, uh, black is you know, but black is at a disadvantage. Um, the irony here is that you know ultimately this um, uh, this end game ended up being drawish uh, with uh, this this uh, king to d six tactical idea or you know resource. Um, but uh, but the main um, thing that I think you can um, pretty clearly improve on is uh, using this in between move as a tactical um, resource for uh, for defense. Um, rook to d8 and uh, and the d6 pawn uh, hangs on for at least a little bit longer. Um, that said, uh, this um, this structure is uh, is consistently good for um, good for white. Uh, you know what I was sort of getting into it, but. Um, you know, there's many cases in which you will have a e4 pawn against a d6 pawn or a d4 pawn against an e6 pawn. Um, and the more advanced pawn has the spatial advantage. Um, you know, if there were no pieces there, um, there was no, um, if there were no pieces there, then basically um, there would be a, uh, uh, no opportunity for either side to improve. So like, just imagine a situation in which these two pawns were the only two pieces on the board. Neither could move forward because the other one would take it. So d5, pawn takes d5, or um, or uh, e5, pawn takes e5. Um, those two pawns are basically at a at a you know at a stalemate versus each other. Um, so the uh, so the improvement there um, is in uh, uh, so so basically the the side that has the more advanced pawn has the the spatial advantage. Yeah, I mean you know I don't think I'd. Um, uh, I you know I, with tactical errors, um, I, you know I don't know if I can add that much. I mean the engine is is better than I am, and it's better than everybody is at tactics. Um, so so the engine you know I, I can I can come up and explain with it you know explain some things, but the engine's uh, better than all of us. So um, the uh, so that's the main um, uh, the main point of this is that the engine. Um, uh, you know, can can uh, do better than than we can at any of the tactical stuff. Um, the things that I can offer instructively are sort of along the lines of like, okay, um, in these types of games, uh, you know, sometimes there are opportunities um, where white has, uh, you know, white has the ability to play discovered threats on h5. Um, that's a common thematic. Uh, that's a common thematic idea. Um, knight g5. Uh, you know, being strong here. Um, but, anyways, um, the uh, y you know, basically this this discovered knight g5 or potentially knight takes e5. Uh, that's that's a common theme to uh, to the Rui Lopez and a few other openings. Um, so so something that uh, that a pattern that you should definitely recognize because I think practically it could be useful in your games. Um, I think focusing on that and telling you to focus on that I, I think is potentially instructive. Uh, but the tactics, you know, I can I can say like, yeah, okay, Queen C7 offers this cool in between move and the ability to add another uh, another um, defensive tactical resource. Um, but uh, but basically, um, you know, at the end of the day, uh, this um, uh, you know this in between move is mostly on on uh, you know I, I they're they're tough to see, but with the with sufficient tactical training, I think you would see this uh, this counter attack. And uh, you know it's it's cool to demonstrate that it can happen, um, but uh, but this pattern is uh, is something that you would become more and more able to see through uh, through tactical study. Yeah, I think that's I think that's right, Tarasha. Uh, more tactical study for for all of us. 
Um, but this would be like an instructive example where like, you know, really coming up with a good tactical idea is enough to save, uh, save the weakest point here. Um, but anyways, yeah, super interesting, uh, super good game. Um, but, uh, but those are the points that, uh, those, I, th there are three instructive things, I think. Um, keep in mind uh, the potential for a knight discovery on, uh, on a hanging piece here. Um, and uh, uh, here you have a tactical improvement um, with a double attack. Uh, and then the final one um, is, uh, I think this draw could have been secured with, uh, with king um, in front of the pawn in a rook and king, rook, and pawn endgame. Um, I think the combination of those t uh, three are, are somewhat helpful. Um, but yeah, anyways, just the very interesting game. Uh, sorry it was a difficult one, but yeah, no, thank you guys very much for, uh, for sending these games, uh, and hopefully uh, the instruction's helpful. But it's, it's certainly helpful to me. I, I get to learn a lot about... Uh, a lot about um, you know some of the more instructive concepts, and it's helpful for me to reinforce them to myself as well. Um, yeah, cool. Um, thank you very much, Tarash. Uh, this is um, yeah, th these this is uh, very interesting. Thanks all for sending games in this session. Uh, thanks for Ophelia on uh, on being patient uh, for me pulling the wrong game initially. Um, and uh, and yeah, I appreciate having you guys all here. Um, the next stream is at 6:05 p.m. Eastern tonight. And uh, yeah, we have a lot of games coming in from Reddit, um, and uh, and I'll keep everyone posted on uh, the the slot in which their game uh, their game gets assigned. Um, but thank you all very much for uh, for um, uh, posting uh, yeah posting all the games. Um, it's uh, it's great and it really helps the stream. Um, so yeah, thank you all very much. Uh, have a good one, guys. Uh, see you back at uh, 6:05 p.m. Uh, Eastern tonight. Thanks a lot. Have a good day. Bye.